În condițiile în care se discută tot mai accentuat despre o posibilă criză alimentară, România ar putea să gândească strategic cum să ocupe un loc în față în rândul țărilor care pot înlocui pe piața mondială lipsurile provocate de situația din Ucraina. Pe lângă acest aspect, țara noastră ar putea să se poziționeze mai bine și în privința eventualelor relocări ale afacerilor nevoite să părăsească atât Ucraina cât și Federația Rusă. Larata Sanzanin, șefa biroului Băncii Europene de Investiții de la București, face o serie de recomandări pe care această instituție le poate susține atât cu expertiză cât și cu bani. Sunt Cristina Cileacu. Începe Pașaport Diplomatic. Larata Sanzanin, Head of European Investment Bank, office in Romania. Welcome to Diplomatic Passport. Thank you. What exactly is the role uh, of the European Investment Bank in Romania? Because we know um, this institution is involved in many actions, not only at the level at the European Union, but also all over the world. The European Investment Bank is the EU bank. So as I usually say, Romania is one of my bosses because uh, the shareholders of the European Investment Bank are the EU member states. We are here in Romania since 30 years, promoting uh, projects, supporting financing with both public and private sectors to achieve a sustainable economic growth of Romania. This is our main, uh, main goal. We are a not-for-profit bank. As strange as it can sound, we are not here to make profit, but we are here to promote public policy goals meaning high policy interest, promoting innovation, so promoting environmental climate friendly projects, promoting the SME development. These are our objectives and we try to achieve them by supporting projects that are proposed to us either by the Romanian authorities or by the private sector directly or through intermediary banks. We work with all the major commercial banks in, in Romania. Why? Because in order to remain competitive, As I said, we are not here for profit, so we uh, offer competitive financing. In order to do so, we finance directly large projects, and for the small ones, we partner with commercial banks, and they are mandated by us to, to transfer this advantage and this, uh, this financing to small and medium enterprises. So we cover the full spectrum, both public and private, big and small. Well, you work with Romanian authorities, as you said, and uh, normally the process is uh, the authorities come to you and propose uh, the projects. Indeed. Uh, can you share with us, for everyone to, to understand better, some of these projects, I mean, some examples? We have supported municipal investments. One of our top performers in, uh, in Romania is Oradia, for example, municipalities. They are now at the fourth loan. So what we have done with them, Um, it's mainly urban regeneration, water and wastewater projects. We have uh, supported them uh, getting an e-mobility offering for their citizens, and we can do this in too many other municipalities. A second good example, I think, is that we are supporting the health sector. We will be uh, soon uh, announcing the third loan to one of the three regional emergency hospitals, Yashu, Cluj and Craiova. Mm -hmm. And uh, last but not least, we have uh, supported five universities, higher education in Romania, because we know that uh, uh, one of the key reasons to retain a young Romanians to stay and work in Romania is to offer them better medical services and better education services for their children. That's why we are uh, partnering with five universities in Bucharest and elsewhere in Romania to improve their labs, to have uh, state-of-the-art technology for their students to be prepared and to enter the, the job market prepared and exactly targeting uh, what is uh, actually requested by the labor market currently. But we are also refurbishing their campuses offers and we are also offering them money to pay their researchers better and more to make the research in Romania at university level ever more relevant in the UN global landscape. 
you did mention a couple of our problems basically mm -hmm. in Romania um, we live here you also live here for quite some time yeah uh, and uh, we know all of us that we don't have the infrastructure uh, at the necessary level also the health facilities education facilities as you said uh, are not uh, proper uh, so these are these are supposed to be our priorities but from your perspective from the European Investment Bank perspectives what are the the priorities of Romania we strongly recommend uh, uh, to to stay focused on uh, on on sectors that will allow Romania to be ahead of the curve in what we call now the twin transition and the twin challenge transition meaning the green transition and the digital transition we know that Romania together with other countries in the region are much affected by this transition to low carbon emission economy we believe that uh, it's now time to, to focus on supporting uh, green investments, on incentivizing them, on uh, unlocking green finance opportunities in, in the country, certainly. And we hope that through the PNRR, the Resiliency Recovery Fund, we can achieve that both in the public and the private sector. The same it applies to the digital transformation, so the digital transition, the dig digital agenda. And probably the last uh, point I will make uh, is about the agricultural sector. We believe there is a big potential for, for the agribusiness industry in, in Romania. Of course, it requires a vision at government level and uh, some investments to enable this potential to, to, to become uh, true. But in addition to the sectors I've mentioned before, I would uh, uh, put the green transition, the digital transition and the agribusiness industry as three key avenues uh, for, for achieving a sustainable uh, growth and durable one lasting of Romania uh, in, in the years to come. Well, you said uh, the magic word, PNRR, and uh, I have to say, uh, frankly, that for the Romanian public, uh, we know uh, one thing, that uh, Romania will receive a lot of money, but can you share with us how is this process going to be? I mean, European Union is not just delivering money and that's it. What is the process uh, with the PNRR? Indeed, um, we know that there is a, a lot of expectation among, uh, among the, the Romanian citizens uh, and also it's not always easy to communicate about the complexity of, of such plans. The Romanian plan is a, is, a, is a very big one compared to many other countries. We are talking about 29 billion euro. It has been developed to support mainly the public sector uh, and a small portion of the private sector. In, in this case, we have been entitled as the EIB group to implement the public sector support. Mm -hmm. So the Romanian government will have to um, be able to deliver on certain reforms in order to unlock the money that will be able to finance some projects. It's quite a revolutionary change. I want to say that Romania um, did in my opinion, uh, uh, do quite well in uh, delivering a plan, I mean, at least preparing and drafting it on time. We look forward now to the implementation. Uh, there are uh, some transformational uh, results already. I want to be positive on, on this. Uh, we saw uh, that uh, under the Prime Minister, a special working group has been established in order to make sure that all the ministries work in sync in order to work on the same objective, on the same uh, uh, list of reforms, in order to be able to meet uh, uh, the deadlines and uh, the milestones that uh, they have agreed, that have been agreed with the European uh, Commission. So the work is first and then the money uh, will pay for the work. Indeed, I would say even more, mm -hmm. the work on reforms mm -hmm. is first Okay. and then uh, uh, the money will come. This is quite a change compared to the usual programming of the EU where it, the, the money was linked to projects. Now the money is linked to reforms mm -hmm. which will enable projects. One uh, simple question, is the uh, Recovery and Resilience Plan PNRR um, negotiable? <laughs> Good question. Uh, I think that uh, with the current, it's already as challenging as it can be, that somehow uh, probably now it's about time to focus on uh, progressing with reforms. Uh, of course, in due course, everything 
can be changed if need be. We already saw that uh, with the conflict now in Ukraine, uh, um, there is a, the European Commission came up with the Repower Europe, so a plan to secure energy security faster, to reduce dependence on, on, on gas uh, from Russia. This will have an impact on PNRR, not only a Romanian one, but also other plans in Europe. And therefore, yes, it is changeable. The question is, as to be ch as to it need to be changed now or can it be changed there is a better time to change it maybe next year when the key reforms have been tabled have been started have been kicked off so we can focus on what really needs to be changed and adjusted. Well, you did mention energy for mm -hmm. Europe. Let's understand again in a very uh, simple way. Europe do have the money to, to change the, the infrastructure when it comes to new resources of energy. It's clear that with Repower Europe, uh, uh, the conflict in Ukraine has uh, accelerated a certain uh, um, need to uh, decrease the dependence on, on Russian gas. It was already in the plans to decrease dependence on gas, uh, but probably now the action is more focused on decreasing dependence on, on, on Russian gas and make the EU market more secure and stable, not only for the key players, but for the citizens. That, of course, they have now the effects uh, of these challenges on their bills. As we know, the prices yeah. went up and the bills are difficult to be faced for many of, of the citizens in Romania and not only, I would say. Uh, I think the issue is how we are going to do it and in, in which time frame. So we saw that the COVID pandemic has accelerated in an unprecedented way the digital transformation, public services, education, schools. Uh, I believe that the conflict in Ukraine will accelerate um, the let's say, energy transition. So certainly we will support continuously and even more uh, importantly, renewable energy production. But we will also keep the accent on energy efficiency because we believe that the, the question of energy is a, is a supply demand question and also it's a consumption question. Yes, it is true. We have to replace gas with alternative um, energy sources. Mm -hmm but we have also to take care of consuming less, both at residential and industrial level. And the European Investment Bank has this energy efficiency objective very high on, on its agenda. And when it comes to the other effects of the uh, war in Ukraine, what are the expectations, the perspectives, I should say, of the European Investment Bank? What do we expect to happen next? We have been uh, quite uh, fast in, uh, on one side, uh, preparing a response package for Ukraine. So we have made available uh, uh, 700 million euro financing to Ukraine, both to keep going on their uh, commitments and as well uh, somehow facing uh, extra needs uh, by their citizens. Uh, um, and this is what we have done immediately to serve Ukraine. We are there to, to help uh, also, for example, relocating businesses, uh, not, not only out of Ukraine, but out of Russia, if the conflict will continue to last. We are ready to respond to this kind of need of relocating investments in this country and working and talking with the governments and other stakeholders to enable the business climate to do so, because um, everything is possible, but it should be clearly up and a top priority for governments to enable this, including hiring Ukrainian uh, right employees, which is uh, now the government has made some moves, but uh, you, you still need regulations and norms in order for companies to be uh, supported in, in hiring Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian employees. We know that uh, for a fact that uh, some of the investors do not, in, do not progress with their investments in Romania because they fear they will not be able to, um, to hire the skilled labor force they need. Well, in this case, the, um, the conflict in Ukraine and the, the consequences, the economic consequences of businesses leaving Ukraine, but mostly leaving Russia and exiting Russian market, 
here's an opportunity for, for Romania and the neighboring country, and we are there to support the, mainly in this case the government, in case they, 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 they think that this is a priority for them, we certainly can help, not only with financing, but also with advisory. Uh, we have in Romania one of the largest offices of the European Investment Bank. It is not full of bankers, as someone would expect, but it's full of experts, engineers, economists, and we provide advisory for free uh, wherever it's needed in order to facilitate uh, the putting in place of, of certain priorities the government can have, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when this is priority not uh, long planned, but is abrupt, as in this case, it's sudden, we, they need a fast response. We are located here on the ground in order to quickly take up their request and, and try to, to support their uh, ultimate objectives. One effect we uh, witnessed, especially uh, here and in uh, the neighboring country, Bulgaria, for mm -hmm. instance, was this uh, panic uh, on the, uh, at the level of population regarding the mm -hmm. uh, sunflower oil. Yes. People think that the stocks will be uh, ending soon mm -hmm. and uh, the prices will go up. You mentioned agriculture. And Romania is an uh, agricultural uh, country, so is Poland. Uh, can Romania and Poland, uh, if we look from the perspective of European Investment Bank, uh, supply the agricultural uh, products that Ukraine and Russia uh, produced before? Often when we, when we are looking into investments uh, for Romania and the region vis-à-vis -vis Western Europe, we we are confronted with um, a critical mass issue, with the size issue, in the sense that investments sometimes are not big enough, are not ambitious enough, and uh, in general, Romanian market is missing out uh, compared to other markets in, in the EU. The current situation in Ukraine and the fact that uh, Romania can think strategically about positioning itself uh, even for, as a temporary solution for uh, the, the loss of and the lack of uh, agricultural supplies coming from Ukraine, the, even I would push even further uh, for Romania to think that there could be cross-border synergies in the agricultural sector with some of the Ukrainian uh, companies would certainly help Romania to increase the the critical mass and the size of the investment, thinking that in, in the future these cross-border synergies can be developed further and uh, it helps certainly Romania to have a better and more solid positioning vis-à-vis um, -vis the EU market. Uh, so there is certainly a, um, an avenue there to explore. But it, is, it would be unfair to, to the private sector if we would say that it only has to be market driven. There should be uh, a political vision about it, uh, um, even a regional vision, if, uh, if we want to say. Uh, we know for a fact that Poland is getting prepared uh, from a framework, legislative framework point of view, to facilitate relocation of businesses from Ukraine and Russia to Poland. I think that uh, key decision makers in Romania can think about uh, um, how they can, how Romania can exploit this situation and transform it from a from a challenge into from a challenge into an opportunity. Welcome some of the businesses that, uh, particularly in the agricultural sector, that are now uh, impeded to deliver their supplies because of the conflict situation. And uh, uh, we say in Italian, da cosa nasce cosa. So from one uh, situation, uh, another can, uh, can grow and the future businesses can, uh, can be located in Romania, can be um, the starting point of, uh, of, a, of a new and long venture, uh, particularly in Romania, to step up its ambition in the agribusiness sector. I know it's wartime and uh, we're supposed to stick to this type of, of stories, but uh, there is also a very important story. And since you are a woman leading the uh, Office of uh, European Investment Bank in Romania, I do have to ask, how is working with a government uh, um, like ours, where is only one uh, lady uh, mm -hmm. minister? 
I think it's always uh, time to speak about uh, gender, diversity and inclusion. We have never to forget these are uh, very important uh, um, horizontal and I would say even structural issues when it comes uh, to Romania. Why I say so? Um, as I mentioned earlier on, sometimes um, investors are holding back their investments in Romania because they believe they will not find all the skilled labor force they will need to run the investment. If we look at numbers, it's clear that uh, in Romania we need to strengthen and improve the economic participation of women, bring more women in the labor market. Because of this, uh, um, they can be this big resource to solve at least partially this lack of skilled labor force um, in, uh, in Romania. But this is not something that can happen overnight. In Romania, it requires uh, quite a, a medium to long term priority that is pursued day after day, year after year. We bring up the topic as many times as we can. Uh, it's not about sometimes of how many women you have in the government, but it's about how many people in the government, in the parties, in the public administrations are ready to champion this initiative. I would like to see uh, more women and men championing uh, this sort of initiative. And uh, to my experience, it doesn't make a difference if it is a minister or the director general or the president of a party. It's important to have champions ready to, to, to defend this as a priority and to walk the talk. Lara Tassan Zanin, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you for your time and for your attention. Atât pentru astăzi, dar rămânem în continuare online pe pagina de Facebook a emisiunii și pe contul nostru de Twitter. Revenim cu subiecte noi din lumea diplomației și a politicii externe, vinerea viitoare de la 11.30 și în reloare sâmbătă după miezul nopții. La revedere!